So I think I've gone so far as to say, I think the whole young restless reform movement, Time Magazine said I was one of the thought leaders that helped create that. I'm not even, I don't hold to the five points of Calvinism. I think it's garbage, but um, so blog about that. But anyways, um, because it's not biblical, but nonetheless, that whole young restless reform, God is father, but he's distant. He's mean, he's cruel, he's non-relational, he's far away. Mm. That's the- All right, grace and peace, everyone. Back again for another video. It's been a while. It's been a minute, but uh, glad to be here. I saw a video uh, going around that uh, you can see from the title what it's about. I saw that this video was going around making its ways in the reform community. You know when somebody talks about Calvinism, you know you know us Calvinists, we get fired up, blood starts boiling. <laughs> Rightly so sometimes, you know, um, especially from people who claim to be former Calvinists or in the reformed world, as we will see. Um you know, Mark Driscoll, you know, he was in the Young Restless Reform movement. I, I, I never was really, I was never really a big fan. I, I listened to Mark Driscoll when I first became Reformed, it was about nine, nine, ten years ago, nine years ago or so, eight, eight, nine, um, maybe a couple sermons, but I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what for reasons, for, for what reasons I just chose not to listen to him. Um, I, I chose to listen to other guys like MacArthur or, you know, uh, Piper and, and Lawson. I was just more attracted to those guys just listening, listening to them and what they were preaching. Um, and boom, all this stuff comes out. And I was like, well, I was never really a, a big listener or supporter of him, you know, especially when, you know, he everybody knows the uh, conference. He, he, you know, went to uh, John MacArthur's conference, uh, Shepherd's Conference and that big fiasco and all. I'm not, I'm not here to get into just really the personal stuff too much about, uh, Driscoll, but you know, he was in the reform camp, you know, there's, I mean, there's no denying that, but he's going to say some contrary things in this video. Um, but he's also going to, in the meantime, also attack Calvinism. And so, but then he espouses it. It's, it's like, wh- where is this coming from? Like, Let's let's just play it. Let's let's just start off, and I'm you know guys, I'm going to add commentary throughout, like I always do, and just provide my reasons why I think uh, it's just contradictory. I mean, he literally contradicts himself in 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 one statement, you know, and so let's do this. So for those of you men who are listening and you have a hard time relating to God, oh by the way, so he they 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 he's on this podcast. I think it's called the debriefing podcast brief something something of that i'm sorry i forgot that but they're they're really talking about galatians but then in the meantime he just busts out and like starts bashing calvinism like a couple times where it's like okay <laughs> it was like irrelevant to it and you like brought it out like well let, let me say something about calvinism it's like all right well you know where you're coming from If you have ever held your son, Mm. God loves you like that. Mm. God is devoted to you like that. God cares for you like that. Mm. For a man, it's a radical thing to think God loves me as a son, Mm -hmm. you know, and he's my father. Mm -hmm. So Jesus teaches us to pray our father. He'll be my little riff. Um, Now you got me a little bit of preaching, but I think everybody's view of God is a projection or a rejection of the earthly father. Mm. Yeah, you and Freud. Atheism. I don't agree with that necessarily, but I'll let him explain. Says yeah. I have no dad. Agnosticism said I never met him and I'm not looking for him. Deism says he used to be here, but he left. He lives far away. Mm-hmm. Progressivism says my dad is more like a big brother, permissive parent, lets me do what I want. Right. Arminianism is I, I have a dad who lets me make my own choices, doesn't tell me what to do. Reform theology is I have a dad who is powerful. Uh, He is in charge. He's non-relational. He lives far away. And don't make him mad because he can get angry really fast and hurt you. Right. All right. So first thing, I think every Armenian should be mad (laughs) because I don't even think they would say, uh, well, God just lets me do whatever I want. And, you know, there's really it makes me I'm I'm in charge. You know, I I think they would be mad at that claim. So I'll let them deal with that, you know, but I'm not an Armenian. So but as far as the Calvinist claim goes, that we believe that God is non-relational and far away. Now, what Calvinist has ever said that? And this guy's supposed to be a former Calvinist. He's in the reform world. He's literally going to say that. Um, so, w- w- I'm struggling with words here because no one's ever taught that. I mean, we we clearly teach the union of Christ. I mean, just the... 
the doctrine of union with Christ, being united to him, um, the love of God. Um, predestination is all about the love of, love of God. In love, he predestined us. So it's like, where is he getting this from? Just making this up. I mean, no Calvinist has ever taught that. Um, yeah, God, you know, so that's deism, what he's promoting, not Calvinism. <laughs> I mean, okay, if it was deism, it's like, okay, you got a point. But no, we believe that God so loved the world. He, he came, right? He sent his son. Like the God who was transcendent became with us. So I don't know where he's, I mean... And, through, and, and and I don't want to try to impugn his motives, but only somebody who's trying to become relevant again would say something like this. Like, he's been irrelevant for a while. And so it's like, the only way to straw man Calvinism so bad, and like, only way to become relevant is like, he talks about Calvinism. And I, I don't know why, why he would say that. Okay, you know, you want to say the whole powerful thing. I, I, I disagree, but... That, because, I mean, that's not even close where we believe, well, God's so powerful, he'll, he'll strike you dead once you, you know, mess up. Or, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're all about the grace and forgiveness of Christ. We understand that. Matter of fact, you have some of those more Pentecostal movements and that he says he's a part of now that are more like that. You know, legalism is real strong in those camps. But, whatever. That's not our view of God. Why he would say that, I have no idea. And and then feminism comes along and says, let's just be raised by a single parent called God as mother. Mm. And so th almost every theological group within Christianity is somehow a rejection or projection of their earthly father. And the problem is they're starting with their earthly father and looking up. They're not starting with their heavenly father and looking down. Mm. And Hey, I, I don't know my father. So why, why, why did I come out saying, hey, there's no God? <laughs> You know, so that's what I'm saying. This doesn't, this doesn't work. You know, so that's why I don't necessarily agree with it. I, I don't view my God. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I don't view God. Well, yeah, I don't view God uh, not being there because I grew up without a father. So, uh, yeah. Judging their earthly fathers. Yeah. So I think. I, I mean, it can't. Uh, and I'm not. This, this can be true, but we shouldn't make it a, you know, one to one corollary. Like, well, if you don't have a dad or if you. If this is how your dad was, then this is how you'll view God. Not, not necessarily. So far as to say, I think the whole young, restless reform movement, Time Magazine said I was one of the thought leaders that helped create that. I'm not even, I don't hold to the five points of Calvinism. I think it's garbage, but. Okay, so he says the five points, five points of Calvinism is garbage, right? That's his claim. The five points of Calvinism are garbage. Okay. <laughs> um. So blog about that. But anyways, um, although you I, I'm, I'm going to let you guys hear. He actually espouses on one of the five points. And I, I didn't put this in here, but he subtly uh, talked about election in a way that I'm, I couldn't tell if he was saying he believed it. So I, I was like, I'm not even going to put that in there. But it was almost some kind of hit at predestination. This is not biblical. But nonetheless, that whole young, restless reform. God is father, but he's distant, he's mean, he's cruel, he's non-relational, he's far away. Mm. Which Calvinists don't believe. So if you were teaching that, I mean, you were really far out there in the island by yourself. If that's what you were claiming you once held to. I mean, you were on, you were on an island <laughs> farther than jo Patmos, right? Than the Apostle John, right? You were, you were way out there. Because no Calvinist teaches that. That's their view of their earthly father. So then they no, pick dead mentors. Right. Spurgeon, Calvin, Luther. These are little boys with father wounds mm. who are looking for spiritual fathers. So they pick dead guys who are not going to actually get to know them or correct them. Right. And then they join networks run by other young men mm. so that they can all be brothers. There's no fathers. Right. Um, and at first I was really offended at this. I was like, what is this guy talking about? There are older men. Like in the reform camp, I was thinking MacArthur, I was thinking Piper, I was thinking Lawson, I was thinking Vody, I was thinking all these older men who are leaders who men have submitted to. And but then I was like, wait a second, he's not talking about that reform movement, reform camp. He's talking about his experience 
where he was the young pastor with with no authority. <laughs> he was the, the the main guy. He's talking about the young restless reform movement, which a lot of reform people stood against, including myself. Where it was this, oh, you go around smoking pipes and cigars. Not that smoking cigars is wrong or evil. Listen, guys, listen to my point. The point is, <laughs> is that they were into this this hip making reform cool and, and 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 you know, yeah, they were stuck to these dead guys with with not being in a local church and and all this. I met so many people with that mindset. So I shouldn't even be mad at the statement because he's really just condemning his own experience. Fine, all right, you ain't talking about what's majorly going on in the reform camp. Or at least to my experience, I'm not so stuck to the dead guys where I don't submit to a pastor or don't have older men in my life. Love, love, love Jesus because they love the story where the son is the hero mm -hmm. because they're the sons mm -hmm. with father wounds. Right. I have no idea with how he's trying to psychoanalyze the story to make it be about Calvinists because if anybody knows anything about Calvinists, we, we, we do not want the story about us. We're clearly talking about anthropocentric uh, movements, right? You're not David. You know, that's us. <laughs> the story isn't about Christ. I mean, I mean, sorry, the story is about Christ. The story is not about us. We're constantly saying, no, that story about David is not about you. The story about Abraham is not about you. I, I don't know where this, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm so, I don't know where this is coming from. I, I guess I should. It's it's just his past experience where it was. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Right. Jesus. It, it almost makes it seem like right there he's trying to say Calvinists believe something different. Like, if that, state, if that statement was connected to the last, you know, minute or so, it almost seems like, well, Calvinists believe something else. We're, we love that verse. <laughs> <laughs> we love John 6 44 forgives you mm. and the father heals you yeah the reason that Jesus saves you is to get you to your dad mm -hmm. and a lot of people are forgiven and they're not healthy because they don't know their dad yeah oh. I couldn't think of any worse news I believe I'm forgiven and healthy spiritually speaking it ain't dependent on my dad that's why I'm like man th th this part there was, let me, uh, let me say this about the interview. There was a lot of good stuff in the interview where I'm like, man, that, that's really good insight. But then there was stuff like this where I'm like, it's almost like forgiveness is based on your, your relationship with your dad. Well, there goes the good news for me. There goes the good news for a lot of you guys who either don't know your dad or your relationship with your dad was never good. And so, thankfully, the, the gospel transcends earthly relationships man so, and you know in my earlier years I'm, i've been doing this 20 some years there were certainly times that i was out of line i was critical and i'll just tell you it was out of insecurity it was out mm -hmm. of jealousy or it was out of self-righteousness sometimes it's out of ignorance mm -hmm. like i was kind of in the reform dish world and okay he states right i was i was in past tense i was in the reform camp world Right, he calls Calvinism garbage as well. Right, listen to what he says. You know, whatever. And now I'm kind of in the Pentecostal charismatic. Okay, so the transition. I was in. Now I'm here. Right, reform, Pentecostal. There's a transition. Right, there's a change. World, love them. God bless them. I've just been a Bible teacher for twenty some years. Dozens of books of the Bible. My theology's never changed. <laughs> Bro, I've never seen a a, a a a a more drastic contradiction in one sentence in my life. I was in the Calvinist movement. Now I'm Pentecostal. My theology has never changed. <laughs> yes, it has. Just be honest. You embraced the five points at one point. Now you say they're trash, but that's not a change. So you were lying to people. That, that's the only way I can I can hear what he's saying. Yeah, I never believed it. <laughs> okay. When I hang out with my quote-unquote reform friends, they'll talk about, 
God predestined this and God predestined that and God predestined this and God. And then I go hang out with my charismatic friends who are actually a lot funner to hang out with. And they'll say things like, well, God's destiny for you or you're walking in God's. Oh, I actually did put that in there. So that's the statement that kind of leads me to think he 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 does see election and predestination. You know, because like when I hang out with my 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 reformed friends, um, you know, they talk about predestination and all this. And uh, so that's why I was a little confused. He said he rejects all five points and then he almost he gives a positive view of like the reform camp and say, well, and he's going to go on to say, well, Pentecostals believe the same thing. They just word it differently. So I'm like, wait, do you believe that or not? Because if, if you do, you've already. That's one point of Calvinism. You said that was trash. I mean, that you are affirming now. I'm like, you're saying the same thing different ways. Yeah. No, that's how Although I don't think that Pentecostals and um, Reformed people are saying the same thing when they when they speak of that. But I'll, that that's a minor point. Quickly, our culture has shifted. Yeah. Um, you know. So right, he says that Calvinism is trash. Right. All he rejects all five points. Right. He rejects all five points. Listen to this. ...have just been jumped over, you know, leaped over, and, and we've gone completely leftist. And, and literally, you see these guys going, wait, what a minute, I, I thought I was a classical liberal. And I'm like, no, you, you love Trump. And he's like, oh, uh, no. So that's what's happening. Because we've rejected, you know, but if you're going to accept the good news, right, there's really bad news. And the bad news is, man, you're sick. You know, you're, it's worse than that. You're dead. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So you, you're not just sick, right? He he, he espouses the you know almost <laughs> semi Pelagian. You know you need you're sick, but he's like no 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 way far than that. You're dead. And someone say, well that's come on. I'm reading would say that. All right, let, let him finish his sentence. Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate, right? If you're in the ER spiritually, <laughs> you're dead. Yeah. You know, what? and you can tell this guy's like, oh, come, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> he knows where it's coming from, but. Spiritually, you're dead. Dead people do nothing. Right. You know, dead people choose nothing. You know what? Boom. Although I, I think it's, I wouldn't put it like that because I think that's more of a conflated version of Calvinism. Because dead men do nothing. Dead dead men do do something. The the point is they do according to their nature. So. I think I think I get the point he's trying to make, but that's total depravity. What he's trying to espouse, which he rejects, because five points of Calvinism are garbage, right? <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. This guy, whenever he talked about Calvinism in this interview, was was just terrible. It was things like that. People fix nothing, right? Yeah, you know, it's like Lazarus in the tomb. The King James says he stinketh. Yeah. That's where you start spiritually. Mm. Yes. And and we, and you know the Calvinists always love that Lazarus example, pointing to the spiritual state. But that that was it for for the most part. <laughs> I I had to say something on that because you know a lot of people were sharing that. A lot of my a lot of uh, my non Calvinist friends was like, "Yeah, look at this. This is great." I'm like, "You guys don't even know who Mark Driscoll is. <laughs> you guys don't even see the contradictory statements he makes." So I was like, "Man, let me give let me let me give this an interview." And that's that's where I heard all the contradictions and and uh, I mean, you guys heard it. I mean, just trying to psychoanalyze things and why I don't know why he would do that. I don't I don't know why he would get on that interview. It almost it almost seemed like he was pre planning this stuff, right? He he knew when he came on there. I'm going to take some shots at Calvinists during this Galatian study. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, guys. Maybe maybe you guys know. Um, drop a comment. Uh, leave a like. Uh, share the video. Um, yeah, just let's 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 talk about some Mark Driscoll. All right. So that's all I got for this video. Like I said, leave a like. Uh, leave a like. Give a like. Drop a comment. Share this video if you like. Uh, hope it blesses you and look forward to more content. Grace and peace.